Peter, Vince, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us this week. Uh, another momentous week. You never seem to have a quiet one. Um, I just wondered, uh, first of all, if I could ask you both about the timing of the independent group and its formation. Um, focus has shifted this week for a few critical days as the clock ticks down to Brexit. <coughs> what were your thoughts on the timing, Vince? Uh, impressed? Right. If group? anything, unfortunate, because it has taken attention away from the Brexit issue, which is an overarching one and you know, affects this country for generations to come. And massive, we, all our attention should be focused on it. I mean, quite what precipitated the break, I don't know. And it's, as we know, it's been in gestation for a great long time. And I think in terms of British politics, it's a good thing to have happened. But, but I think the timing is a little unfortunate. Not big marks for the timing. Peter? I'm not sure about that. Um, I mean, I was surprised, <laughs> just as Vince was. Um, uh, but it may be that in this sort of tug of war, um, they have tugged the blanket uh, of both their parties uh, towards taking more into account the views of the pro-Europeans than the Brexiters. Um, it may be that both the Conservative Party and Labour Party leadership fearful uh, that uh, if they fumble, mishandle Brexit even any more than they're doing at the moment, both of them, uh, that there could be, this could provoke a revolt uh, uh, on that side of the party and they will be concerned about it. If that's what happens, then I think it will have been vindicated. But yes. I think there's some worry that, you know, well, the eye is being taken off the Brexit ball. And in terms of the cause of a second referendum, um, has it been damaged? Uh, I hope not. I think you know, the people's vote is still in play. I think we've always seen it very much as a, a kind of last resort. I mean, the first priority next week in Parliament will be to kill the no, no deal, to get the, get the, no, the no deal off the table. Uh, we should all be mobilising behind that. But, but then we get to the point of, you know, is it the government's deal or something else? Uh, and the something else might be, take the form of a people's vote. Government may opt for an election in this very volatile environment. But no, I think it's still very much in play, but as a, as a kind of last resort mechanism. I, I think it's in play in my own party because I think Jeremy Corbyn really now has to you know, <laughs> come to terms with the fact that he is out of step with the bulk of his MPs, the bulk of his party members, the bulk of his activists uh, over Brexit. You know, he really does look to most in the party like somebody who at best is content to sit on his hands and at worst just see the thing go through. But he's a guy who's used to ploughing lonely furrows. Yes. Do you really think he's going to yes. budge and the people close to him look like they're going to budge? He doesn't think that any part of his revolutionary position should be compromised on any issue in any way at all. He is somebody who just keeps ploughing on and thinks that sort of people who disagree with him or critics are sort of simply people who are trying to hold him back or stand in the way of his sort of revolutionary progress um, and that they should just be swept aside. I just don't think it's so easy for him to do that now uh, on Brexit, uh, not least because uh, it's becoming increasingly clear that there are parliamentary seats, there are real votes, there are marginal constituencies uh, which are likely to be very adversely affected from a Labour point of view if he is plays his role in delivering a bad Brexit or any Brexit uh, because there are constituencies in all parts of the country uh, whose Labour members depend on a solid turnout of Remain-leaning voters and they are going to be uh, put in doubt, they're going to be up for grabs, they may even be, heaven for fend, be tempted to go towards Vince's party, uh, away from Labour, uh, if he is not very careful. And I know that many Labour MPs are extremely worried about this. He has so far been fixated on Leave voters, you know, the third of Labour voters who voted Leave in the referendum. Well, there were two thirds of people who voted Labour uh, in the 2015 election uh, who voted to remain and he's got to consider them as well. The people who left this week, the Labour Party, uh, were 
were portrayed by hardcore Corbynistas as people who were only talking about a, a second referendum and Brexit because they wanted to start another party. And lo and behold, they've kind of proved the point. And doesn't that actually harden his resistance to this? It's all part of a sort of a family of thought that it is it resistant may do. to the It's very project. difficult to predict where Jeremy is going to come down. But you know, there are others um, in the shadow cabinet who I know are very concerned about where this is going to go if it's not handled properly. Is that code for thinking of quitting? Or? No, I... It's, I know you never speak in it's, code. It's, uh, it's, it's code for saying uh, that, um, that, that they believe that the leadership has to be less inert, more proactive, uh, and it needs to speak to and take into account a broader spectrum of opinion amongst Labour MPs uh, than Jeremy seems to do. I'm a bit sceptical of this waiting for Jeremy strategy. I mean, I think if the people's vote happens, it will happen in an opposite way. I mean, I think that, that we may get to a point where other options are running out. And the government people, uh, I mean, Theresa May obviously, but the people around her take the view that the only way of rescuing their deal is to put it to the country with the option of remain. I mean, they have a 50-50 chance of winning that kind of contest, they may, may be much more difficult getting it through Parliament. So I, I'm, I'm more inclined to see movement in the government side at the last moment um, than through the Labour Party. But, you know, who knows? I mean, Peter knows these people better than I do. makes a perfectly good point. I mean, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. she wants to get her deal through. Yeah. And, and if pro and the Peter Amendment... Yeah, so the, Amendment. the only condition for getting her deal through uh, is to concede either a people's vote or a confirmatory ballot, as it were, um, uh, the, the, the Peter Kyle, Phil Wilson amendment, uh, then I think that right at the last moment she may do that. Remainers helping her deal get through the most ardent Remainers on the planet. In the face of ardent opposition from the ERG, the headbangers. In order to get a second referendum. Yes. We're talking about how late in the day potentially for that scenario. Well, they're talking about the last week in March. I mean, that seems wildly improbable to me that it could be left that late. But, you know, strange things are happening. And you've always thought, as strategists uh, on the second referendum front, that the later, the better, in a sense. People have to feel it's the last yes, emergency that, button you can that, press. That is, is that right? That is correct. So it plays to your game as well, possibly, even though it's very high wire, yeah, high stakes. Yeah. Can I just bring us back to TIG, as it is, it is being affectionately called, uh, the independent group. Um, I want your assessments of uh, where it's going to go and whether it's going to have, whether it's going to fly, whether it's going to have more impact on the big parties rather than actually being viable itself. But can I just start, Vince, with you? Because uh, I saw uh, Anna Subri at the launch uh, of the three, uh, the three amigos, as they called themselves, uh, yesterday, their switch. And she said how much she'd enjoyed the coalition working with the Lib Dems, you were orange Tories, you were wonderful, you were liberal, you were just humanitarian and delightful. But she didn't come knocking on your door. Well, I would slightly squabble with the idea of being an orange Tory, but <laughs> that's a part. I mean, I, th I, th I think that certainly the, the three Conservatives, you know, worked with us in coalition, would have no difficulty working with us in future. And I think the Labour people for, for rather different reasons. No, I mean, I, I think it's perfectly understandable they didn't knock on our door. I think jumping from one party into another. That's what that, people, that's what Tories always used to do. Well, you know, you, you've been fighting us in previous elections. I mean, making that jump is quite difficult. When I left the Labour Party in the last civil war, I, I, I didn't jump into a, another red, ready, ready made party. party, into a ready made party. I think it was an understandable thing, certainly the conversations I've had with them over the last few months has been on the assumption that they would become independent. Well, how they evolved subsequently, we don't know. I, I, I welcome the move. I made it very clear we're happy to work with them inside Parliament and out. But at the moment, they are a Westminster bubble phenomenon. They're, they're not a party and they don't have an infrastructure as we do. Um, um, but, you know, I think with, with goodwill and common sense, we, we will evolve a good working relationship. Peter, what do you think it says about the viability, the relevance of the Lib Dems, that that old traditional path that was well worn for a while in our political history of defecting from, uh, to the Lib Dems from the Tories wasn't used? 
Look, the, the, the Liberal Democrats at the moment uh, are not in their strongest state. They are not sort of peak performance. Uh, they had a terrible setback um, uh, at the last election. So I, I, I don't think it's surprising that people, you know, leaving one party would automatically see them uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a natural birth. Um, I, I think it is true that Vince did at one point consider whether Chuka might come across the Lib Dems and might even succeed you as leader. No, no, I think that's... Uh, I don't know who spun that tale, but no, no, that, that was never part of the plot, I can assure you. Um, but He's it, normally it, very well informed about these sorts uh, of things. You no, know, I know, but obviously I'm wrong on this occasion, on this, on this subject. Now, I think the thing for the... Are they viable? Um, Look, they're, they're not viable if all they're doing is competing with the Liberal Democrats. They have to compete with the main parties and they have to take further uh, members and, uh, and, and, and energy and resources and force and electoral appeal from both of the main parties. They're not going to do that without a policy offer. I mean, I understand why when they launched they didn't really have anything to say about sort of the political economy of the country at all, uh, but I don't think it is sustainable to continue with that uh, for very long. They're a political party, uh, or potential political party after all. You know, they're people who want to change the country. They're people who want a fairer economy and a stronger society. Well, how? How? Uh, and if they don't have uh, a, a developer policy program, pretty quickly, they're simply going to come across as people who are just sort of chasing votes hither and thither. I mean, just looking for any opportunist opening uh, that they can mm. lay their hands on. And I don't think that is going to, I don't think it's going to attract more people into their ranks. And I don't think it's going to excite the public. I just wonder how much they are um, chasing votes and the degree to which some of them, when you look at the cast, are just thinking, well, this is probably my last parliament, I might as well spend the next few years more pleasantly uh, and not go to Labour constituency meetings. Well, you can imagine. I mean, that must cross some minds, and it, but there might be more lurking who are thinking exactly the same thing. Life will just be more pleasant and I'll be hanging around with some people who uh, I like spending time with. Look, the Labour Party locally is, is in like many areas a very cold and unwelcoming place for uh, for MPs, for, for I, I don't just mean Blairites, I mean anyone who, you know, is centre-left, who's not momentum. Mm. Uh, they, they face uh, daily, weekly, uh, the likelihood that they're going to have a reselection uh, ballot triggered, they're going to be pursued uphill and down Dale. Who wants that? Mm. You know, and I think what Jeremy Corbyn doesn't realise, if you, you know, treat people as enemies, as he does so many in his own party, so many MPs, you know, who are not strict momentum followers, who have not signed up to the creed, that they're likely in over time to become enemies. And that's what we've seen this week with the Labour MPs who have left the party. Uh, I agree with a lot of what Peter said. I mean, I wouldn't underestimate our assets. I mean, we have been through a pretty two torrid elections, that's what we're sure. I'm not sure whether I should re re revive uh, uh, Tim Farron's uh, point about cockroaches surviving a nuclear war, but it was, you know, we, we have survived, we are rebuilding. We've got a very strong uh, local base in, in parts of the country, we actually, and it's spreading. There'll be local elections in May. And we're, that is the first test of electoral opinion. What on earth expect, will they do? We expect to do well, and we're, we're working hard. I'm spending more time on that at the moment than I am on some of the Westminster issues. So I, th I think they shouldn't underestimate, and the public shouldn't underestimate, our, our own resilience and the strength of our asset base. And if there was an election early, yeah. say a new Tory leader decides they fancy yeah. one and use the period, if Brexit were to happen, to call mm. one, it's well, very would, hard they, to get they, a party up and they running. They would be very vulnerable in that situation, clearly. I mean, the I'm sure that's crossed uh, Theresa May's mind. Yeah. You think... It will have altered the calculus in I her think mind. It probably has made a general oh, I election. Think, a I, think, I think that's most likely. An early general election. Oh, yes. I, I mean, think, how well, it, May, much, June? I would, I'd agree with Vince. I think it's a much more attractive, much more viable option. Than it because of this argue. disturbance? Because of the disturbance. I mean, for two reasons. They want to take advantage 
uh, of, in a sense, of a party that's not yet a party and hasn't yet formed and gathered an enormous amount of support and resources. And they may feel that that set against you know, that their, their own Tories' vulnerability, uh, uh, um, that actually it might be as good a risk to go now and early, uh, you know, before a further slide sets in, uh, than to postpone. That suggests, and I'm in danger of predicting the next general election result, which I'm never going to do ever, ever again, but that, that risk uh, pointing at the TIGs and saying they've been tactically foolish, very foolish. Well, they've taken a risk. Uh, a and it had to happen at some point. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't criticise them. I mean, I think there, are, there are bigger forces at work here. But they could be floundering and Is we could be in a general election. Is there ever a perfect or even a good time no. to leave your party and form a new group? I mean, there's no science here. Are you tempted by this one? No, I'm not. Why? I'm not because, well, for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, uh, I believe that the Labour Party is still the only viable alternative politically, electorally, to the Conservatives that's capable of supplying uh, what we need in this country, which is a progressive set of policies and a government who, who will take uh, a, a, a more reasonable and realistic view about Britain's future relationship uh, uh, with uh, uh, Europe. Um, I mean, look, I, I can find many faults and areas of disagreement, obviously, in the minutiae of Labour Party policy. I but suspect it is, you could, but, yes. it, but it is the only, at the moment, viable uh, uh, electoral force. It is the only alternative that we have at the moment. And I don't really want to take the chance of jeopardising that if it means sustaining in office indefinitely a, a, a Conservative uh, government. You used a phrase that I've heard I think already four or five times today from different politicians, which was at the moment. Well, it how much? Well, there's the is civil service doctrine of unright time, as you know, and it's never, never I, the right time. But how much is, well, how much is weighing on that? I think it rather depends on what, on what happens in the Labour Party. You don't dismiss the idea that TIG could look a lot better and more viable in a few months' time, might, uh, might, might have a life, might fly. I don't rule it out for this reason that if over uh, uh, Brexit and the continued turmoil in the Conservative Party, which is certainly not going to end in any circumstances at the end of March, uh, that the, the sort of nationalist sort of headbangers who dominate the Conservative Party uh, uh, lead to the pushing out of even more Tory MPs than we've seen this week, then that will bulk up uh, the independent uh, group. And similarly, in the case of the Labour Party, if Jeremy Corbyn doesn't handle a whole number of issues well, then you're going to see more Labour MPs leaving the party and, and probably going to the independent group. How he handles Brexit, uh, how he handles anti-Semitism, uh, how he uh, handles the threatened uh, uh, reselection battles, uh, how he handles what uh, is Momentum's next aim, which is to clear out uh, the sort of centre-left, more traditional, moderate thinking uh, Labour councillors in local government. That's their aim for this, for this year uh, and next. How he handles all these things are going to be absolutely critical for the survival of the Labour Party. Vince, could you imagine Peter in TIG or whatever it becomes? Well, I, it's got an open invitation to join us too. But no, I think I think this uh, this, new, this, this new venture is more likely to fly if it is has some sort of association and partnership with us. I mean, we are, we are an established party. We are recovering. You've um, already announced you're going to have weekly meetings. Is that right? Coordinating. Uh, no, we haven't group? announced it. Oh well, I think but, I heard it. Uh, well, maybe you're ahead of me, but um, that, that that would be the kind of practical. Um, discussions that we would need to have. Do you think there is a slight element that they've sort of inhaled, they've had a pretty exciting week and they are going to actually come crawling round to your offices and well, knocking I, I, on your door? I, I, we're not crawling and they're not crawling. But I, they yeah. can't compete in all these seats. No, they, they can't uh, and that is any. the political reality. And, 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 and the, the pact to imagine. Seem, I think there is the basis for a 
good business-like relationship. So a pact, perhaps? Well, we can, I, I prefer partnership, association. But you carve up the seats and you say... Well, we're, we're, I think we're a long way short of that. Those local parties, of course, have to be involved in that kind of discussion. And they but can be very the, sensitive. The logic of it is pointing to um, a, you know, that kind of collaboration. But, but it's a collaboration, it would be one of the old uh, cases of you both wanting the same seats. I think this happened in the SDP Liberal Alliance days. The, the ones that are viable, the ones that you, either of you would want to contest, like say the university seats with a high Remain vote, uh, high graduate uh, uh, population, those sort of things, the sort of demographics where that might be good terrain, you're both going to want those. Well, and there aren't that many of them, are there? It's one of the reasons they're not, the moment, not in great shape. At the moment, there is quite a complementarity of interest. Um, I mean, we're, we're not remotely at the stage of thinking about the kind of problems which I had to face in the early 80s in a place like York, where exactly those kind of considerations arose. But, you know, we're in a different world, different dynamics. Uh, I think the difference with what Peter's talking about, and I think we're talking about here, is that this isn't just a Labour Party problem. You know, the, the, something that didn't happen in Mrs Thatcher's time, which, which is this takeover of the grassroots by UKIP-style people, I mean, virtual kind of parallel with the momentum movement on the left, and both major parties in crisis at the same time. This is, this is I think, what is, what is different and interesting and actually positive about it. But you can't rule out that history will judge this TIG moment and a new beginning as something that nudged the parties in a different direction. Rather, as some people, some historians think the SDP's big influence was uh, changing the way the Labour Party thought because it felt it had to come back to... Well, it's difficult to see how the next generation, Neil Kimmock, John Smith, will emerge in the present-day Labour Party, but... Well, I mean, Peter's not giving up on it. Possible. He's staying in. Well, well he's a, he's a rare am. optimist. Because you think there'll be a, a Neil Kinnock or a John Smith along one day, and that will... And, and Momentum, who currently have the grassroots, and the Corbynistas, who currently have all the positions of influence in the party, will somehow melt away or Look, change their mind? In discussions about this with, with Labour MPs and, 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 and colleagues, you know, there's a, <laughs> people are, a lot of people are saying, no, we've got to stay and fight. And there are other people who say, well, actually, it's not a matter of staying and fighting, it's just a matter of staying, because we don't have any army, we don't have any artillery, the grassroots have been taken over. Uh, uh, the Jeremy and, and the people around him now control not just the leadership but the machine uh, and once they start uh, um, applying the rules in ways to suit their own ideological or factional ends then that becomes very very hard uh, to stand up to let alone reverse so for many people I know I've spoken to this week uh, as I say, that they, when they, people say, well, you've got to stay and fight, they say, well, let's be realistic. You know, it just means staying in a party which is, as I say, uh, very cold and very unwelcoming to their point of view, uh, where a lot of opinion in the party is driven uh, by... Uh, a nastiness and a virulence. I'm struggling to see uh, what you're which, saying. Which is, which, which is something that you couldn't really imagine in the Labour Party. I've been in the Labour Party 45 years. I have never, ever seen uh, such nastiness which is meted out to so many other party members by people, by and large, using social media, uh, on, you know, I support Jeremy Corbyn Facebook uh, uh, groups. You should see it sometime. I've been shown it. I, 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 it's I'm, absolutely... I, I mean, but you sound like you're giving a platform speech for TIG. You're getting it to see the merits of being in a much smaller well, group that's actually happening. But you've got to... But, but these are the questions that people are going to be What's the uh, route? facing. And what the leadership to of the party... The sort of leadership you I've want. I've already said to you, the leadership of the party has got to decide whether, for example, it is really going to crack down on online abuse. You told me Jeremy of Corbyn which, doesn't change. Of, of which, and, but he's not the sole individual. And what I also said to you earlier in this discussion is that there are others in the leadership of the party who don't take quite the same complacent uh, uh, a revolutionary view that he does. John McDonnell, for example, I think, uh, is going to become uh, a more, not less interesting and important figure uh, in the coming months. 
Oh, you're putting all your chips on him. He's going to. He, no. He's your. He's your Kinnock. No, I didn't. He's I, your John Smith. No, I didn't say that. And but. But I'm asking. I'm, but, I'm, but, I'm but, curious but, to know what it is you mean by that. Yeah, but but I but I but I take the humour. Um, there are people in the shadow cabinet uh, uh, who are loyal to Jeremy, but think Jeremy is ser in serious danger of mishandling uh, the challenge that now faces the party. Now, in the first instance, it's those people who've got to sit up, rediscover their spines, generate a bit of uh, uh, gumption uh, and, uh, and a bit of uh, uh, courage. Shadow cabinet stand coup. up to this. Well, it's not a matter of coup. Please, please don't talk I'm about trying to... In, in, you know, people have... There are other voices. Small There scene. are other points of view. There are other people who take a different view from Jeremy in his handling of all this. For example, on Brexit. Now, uh, those people are either going to stand up and be counted, uh, or they're simply going to sit back, sit on their hands, and let the entire... Uh, uh, river flow past them and probably, in my view, given the direction the part is in, carry it off into some sort of oblivion. Now, I do not want that to happen. You know, I want this situation to be dealt with. I want it to be gripped, but it can only be gripped by people in positions of responsibility at the top of the party, and that doesn't include people like me. We're going to have to close any minute because Vince has to go off and do some local election uh, yeah, campaigning. And uh, in probably those very seats that Tig would like to uh, try out, I suspect. But in a nutshell, is what we saw launched today, that rocket, is it going to It's potential. Fly? It has potential. Or is, it, is history going to judge it as a thing that influenced the other parties? Well, had it just been a Labour splinter group, I think that it would simply have divided the Labour Party and strengthened the Tories. But the fact that the Tories are moving at the same time makes it different, creates a much more positive dynamic. Whether it succeeds or not, they've got massive obstacles. Uh, I just reiterate that I think working with us would be sensible. Um, we can help each other, or we could damage each other badly if we resorted to fighting. And I, th I think, you know, my instincts are, is that we should just, you know, go along with this very positively and, and work with it. And I'm off today to Cambridgeshire, which is a, a very good example with one of the uh, with a group there. Um, a Tory MP was joined uh, the, the new group uh, with a Lib Dem council uh, and a very large uh, Lib Dem uh, vote. Uh, if she survives, it will be with our support. And. Uh, in principle, uh, you know, we, we're happy to look at it in that way, but it, it will depend on two-way cooperation. Peter, in a nutshell, looking into the crystal ball, 20 years ahead, it flies, or it's just remembered as something that pulled the other parties a bit? Most likely, it doesn't fly, and it performs a service in tugging on the other parties. I'm very grateful. A cockroach and a Svengali. Thank you for joining us.